Good evening, chess friends. It's Rafi, and in today's video, I am playing a 10 minute game with five seconds of increment. The game started with e4, c6, d4. That's now after d5, going to be the Karo Khan defense. <coughs> he plays knight c3. We take on e4. I believe this is called the main line of the Karo Khan. And here, there's a couple of moves. Bishop f5 is one. I believe that's the main line. After which usually follows knight g3, bishop g6, h4, h6, knight f3, knight d7, h5, etc. But the line that I like to play is um, another line. I forgot the name of this, honestly, for a second here. But this line tries to quickly... You know, um, quickly trade off the knights on, on f6, but he chooses not to do that. So instead, we have to come up with a new strategy, new plan now. I believe h5 is the right idea here. After knight g3. That's the best way to punish the fact that he put the knight on g3, I think. So now that he played h4, um, I could play bishop g4 now. If f3 happens here, then I could probably play queen c7. Okay, so he plays knight to f3. That's fine with me. That's fine with me because I can play e6 and get the bishop to d6 and immediately start putting pressure on the knight on g3, which is feeling a little uncomfortable here because the h-pawn has already moved. <clears throat> so, for example, right now, I think I can play bishop d6 already. possible he might play knight e5 here certainly a possibility That seems to make the most sense, I think, knight e5. Um, otherwise, he would have to move his knight on g3. Otherwise, unless he wants to get double pawns on on the g-file, which I don't think he that would help him much because after queen c7, that pawn on g3 would feel very... It would prove to be difficult to defend. So I think, given that situation, he will probably play knight e5 here. I believe that's what he's calculating. So after knight e5, what do we do is the question. <clears throat> so he played knight e5. So I can tra take the bishop on e2. Or I can take the knight on e5. So n bishop takes e5. He can't take bishop takes g4 because he's losing the pawn on d4. So bishop takes d takes e5. Then let's just say I play queen takes d1 check.
at the end of the day, after all those trades, I don't think I'll be getting much. I'll just be giving the bishop pair for no good reason. So maybe I should trade here. <clears throat> So if I now play knight to d7, he will play bishop f4 maybe? But then I have knight d5 in that position. Queen c7 is next. Also another idea. In fact, I might play queen c7 right now. He accidentally moved the bishop back and he wants to take back, but unfortunately I don't allow take backs. So that will be a no, unfortunately. It happens. Plenty of times I've done that as well and lost games. So just a part of the game. Just a part of the game. I think I'm going to castle queenside here. Seems to make the most sense to do that. Why don't I just trade and then take... And then play that queenside castle move. Yeah, now I'm up a pawn, and I don't think I have much to worry about in this position at all. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward advantage at this point. Up a pawn, no weaknesses, nothing like that. I will probably just, I don't know. Play the rook. d5 and then put the other rook line up the other rook also behind it so rook h to d8 and then I have some interesting ideas with rook d1 followed by bishop h2 check if he if he isn't careful He really needs to move the bishop now, yeah. That would be the move that I would play as well. <coughs> so if I play f6 here, his bishop will go back to e3. Better yet, let's play bishop f6 because I can uh, open up the g file to attack him down. It's one possibility. And then also queen d6 is one idea here to just triple up on the d file so that there is no rook d1 coming. 
Right now, already, there's no rook d1. I have complete control of the d file. So now we take. So now the g file is ours to work with. Also, the idea is to play rook d2 and start harassing the pawns on the... <clears throat> on the d-file. So for example, already rook d2, I believe, is a possibility here. He wants to trade the B pawn for the H pawn. That is fine with me, I think. I can allow that. Let's go for it. Because my queen is coming to F4, and I'm going to put all types of pressure shortly here. So now f2 is under pressure, he has to become passive to protect it. Mm. If rook d2, so rook d to d2, queen takes f7, rook takes f2. Queen check, king here. King can always hide on b6, I believe. I think I'm gonna go for it. I believe I can go for it. Because I always have the hiding spot on b6. So with this move, I could take the pawn. Could trade queens and play rook c3. That's definitely a way to win. That's one way to win. But that... It's complicating. Let's just go this way and get rid of that dangerous uh, passed pawn that we have. So we'll go ahead and park the queen on g5, I think. Keeping pressure on g3 all the time. If the queen ever were to move away, there's queen takes g3, f takes, rook g2, king h1, rook h2, king g2, and then king g1 and rook g2 mate. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and take the other pawn for free also. I mean, why not? Why did he play this move is the question.
Let's centralize our queen and get control of that diagonal. Let's be safe. Slowly, let's improve our position. No need to rush into anything here. We have three extra pawns, and that's sufficient for compensation here. Now we can slowly, slowly start to improve the position. The idea is to get the rook and the queen to line up on the h file, I believe. So rook d5 is going to be my next move, I think. <clears throat> yeah, so he promptly stops that, which makes sense. So if check on h8, then I'll play rook. Um, ooh, that's... Not good. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I missed that. I missed the fact that this would happen with a7 and rook at the same time. So, I don't think there's a perpetual. Oh gosh, jeez, am I about to lose this game? Oh my gosh, that's crazy. That was an amazing move. <laughs> wow. I think I just lost. That's incredible. That is incredible. I think I just literally lost. Yep. Yeah. Oh gosh, that loses the queen. Oh. That's crazy. This is insane. <laughs> That's just crazy that he just found that. That's insane. What a turn of events. Okay, well, let's analyze it. That is extremely insane that he had this resource of Rook D1, and I was just lost after that. So all this is pretty standard stuff. E6. Bishop D6. Theory still. Knight E5 is what he played. So after Knight E5, Bishop takes E2. Computer doesn't like it that much. Bishop takes e5, d takes, queen a5, check. Queen d2, queen takes e5. Oh, wow, that's I missed a tactic there. Okay. I could have won the pawn on e5. Bishop takes, pawn takes, queen a5, check. Followed by queen takes e5.
Again, I could have won the pawn right away here. Queen a5 check. I kept missing this idea over and over. Now he had knight. Knight takes d7. King takes d7. Interesting. So then this is where he had the mouse slip where he played bishop c1. So here I thought I was definitely winning. Traded everything off to a completely winning, what I thought was winning endgame. Really, I should have taken a second to just put my king on b8, I think. I just couldn't believe that I would lose from that position. <laughs> just crazy. It's totally insane that he had that resource of rook d1. Unnecessarily, I took on that H, uh, weakness on h5. I should have just played f6 here. So here, I mean, yeah, like most of the moves that I played here were pretty standard and accurate, I think. And now I'm completely winning, of course. Just a matter of closing out the position. Still completely winning. Here I start playing a little passive, but I thought it was still fine. I thought... Things are okay. Um, this is where I started going wrong here. So queen g6 allows queen a5, which was a double double attack on a7 and the rook at the same time, which I completely missed. Then I play rook d4. Here's where I make the absolute blunder. Rook takes c4, which loses on the spot, I believe. Because of rook d1. Absolutely did not see this move at all. I thought he was play queen a8 check. I thought king, you know, I play king c7. I thought maybe he'll give another check on a5. I thought I would just walk away. King d7. If rook d1 check, maybe I play king e7 or something like that. The fact that he could play rook d1 first just completely slipped me. After rook d1... You know, this position is lost. There's nothing to do. Absolutely nothing. So this is a very big tactical slip-up in this game. Definitely big time tactics error. Hopefully we can work on these kind of things and fix them in the future. Leave in the comments below what you thought about this video and I will catch you in my next video.